Mike Dinbrock hired as LSU offensive coordinator. This, okay, so my weirdest reaction to this is that, like, the new OC should be big news, and this does almost uh, nothing for me. Uh, ju- just in terms of, like, things to talk about today, interesting conversation. And it's not even to say that Dinbrock's not good because Dinbrock has been really good. I mean, at Cincinnati, he's been great. Look at what Desmond Ritter has done since he's been there. I think he was, like, two-time conference uh, offensive player of the year. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in four years, he's over over 12,000 yards, 116 touchdowns. Like, hell yeah, that's what you want out of your starting quarterback. It's just that in, in an age where everybody's always looking for, uh, you know, the sexy young hires and everything, this is um, the opposite of that. Though, how about this, Jake? How about this? Maybe we've learned a little bit uh, that sometimes going back to the tried and true ain't so bad, right? Like, like we talked about Bet you a lot of people wish that this year's team still had Steve Insminger yeah. as the OC, right? And, and and I get some very slinger vibes from Denbrock when you kind of look at the length and 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 breadth of their careers. Yeah, I'm never a big fan of we well, got to go get this guy, we got to go get the young guy, we got to get the veteran guy, we got to go get no, just go get who you think's the best for the job. And again, like we said in headlines, this is somebody that Brian Kelly's very familiar with. He's been multiple places with him also uh kind of overlapped with Scott Wilbert as well at he was the offensive line coach at Washington from 05 to 08 and Scott was the AD uh in uh, he was the acting AD I believe in 07 and then of course the uh, official AD in 2008 so they actually probably know each other somewhat uh-huh. as well because Scott knows the assistant coaches Scott's obviously uh you know very involved in the football program so yeah. there's some overlap there as well and look this is somebody that he believes in he believes in him because he's had him in multiple spots and when he had a chance to bring him back as his offensive coordinator, that's what he went and he uh, he did that. So I'm kind of like you. It's like, okay, like it's it's a safe one. That's not to say that it's a bad one. Yes, it is safe. It, but it is very safe. I mean, they, they, they go all the way back to G Valley State, seven years together at Grand Valley State. So this is a partner. This is like somebody that you two came up in the game together and here you sit. And you now, now this is your biggest opportunity yet, right? As big as Notre Dame is, like we talked about, Kelly choosing to leave in the way that he did is a direct commentary on what he feels the ceiling there is versus the ceiling here. Leaving the eleven and one team, joining the six and six one, uh, all the things that we've talked about before, and now Denbrock is saying, you know what, I'm going to join you for this final push. And hey, look, Denbrock, welcome to the game. You already got a little revenge that you're looking for now after <laughs> Alabama completely. <laughs> Shut them down the other day. I mean, you knew it. The announcers are talking about that. Like, we're talking to Fickle, and he's like, I just, you know, I'm worried about how we're going to do on the line. Imagine that. Alabama's line just kicked Cincinnati's line's ass on both sides. Oh, when, when I talked like, to Luke what? Fickle, he was certainly aware of the situation. Yeah, exactly. Like, he he's was not, not trying to make it something it was. I mean, he said the right things, and he's like, look, I, I got a damn good football team, but that's the standard over there. <laughs> you know, they've been doing it for a long time, and there's a reason why they are who they are, and, I mean, he understood it. And, uh, again, I, I am not – there were some weird, some very weird takes this weekend about Cincinnati being – in the CFP, I'm not one of those people. In this year, they deserve to be in there. Like you said, the semifinal games kind of is what it is. I mean, 21 yeah. points is the average in that game anyways. Michigan got done the same way, and Michigan was the two seed. Um, you know, Cincinnati definitely had some Jimmys and Joes. If they played that game 10 times, though, they lose it 10 times. That's just what that is. But, you know, that's a good football team that just got beat by a better team. Yeah, and so now Denbrock will join Kelly, and they will both – try to uh, sit here and see if they can catch it. I mean, Nick Saban feels like he's playing retro bowl at this point. He feels like he's playing a video game, making nine of 13 or nine, nine of 13, not nine of 12, right? I think it's a nine, nine of 13. 13. Jeez. Either way. Oh my God. That's, uh, that's, that's awful. It's absolutely awful. All right. When we get back, let's close out hour number one here on OTV.